Hello all. Welcome to today's session. In today's session, we will be studying about the measurement of horizontal and vertical angle using theodolite. First of all, coming to the measurement of horizontal angles. Using the theodolites, we can measure the horizontal angle using three methods. First is ordinary method. Second one is repetition method and third one is reiteration method. Let us see one by one. First one is ordinary method. See as seen in this, in this figure, uh, if you have to measure angle AOB using ordinary method, what are the steps that you have to take? First of all, you have to set up your theodolite at station O. And after setting your instrument at O, properly centering it, you have to do the leveling of the instrument. So level it accurately and after that set your vernier A on the graduation circle okay, uh, to 0 or 360 degree. Then after setting your vernier A to 0, you have to properly clamp your upper clamp screw. And then loosen the lower clamp. Loosen your lower clamp and you have to turn the instrument so that you can bisect and see the rod or something that will be fixed at station A. So properly bisect A by loosening the lower clamp and uh, you can do the fine adjustment that means you have you can bisect it accurately using the lower tangent screw. Then after bisecting accurately you must check your circle, graduation circle, your horizontal circle is still reading 0. If it is uh, ok, then you have to read the vernier B also and record both the readings Ok, at A. Now, what we can do? What is the next step? Now, you need to bisect, you, you have to rotate your instrument and you have to bisect the ranging rod that will be fixed at B. Okay. So, for that, first of all, you have to loosen your upper clamp screw and you have to turn your telescope and sight B. Then, after sighting B properly, using the tangent screws and all, you have to tight your upper clamp and bisect your uh, B accurately with the help of the tangent screw, upper tangent screw. The accurate bisection can be done using upper tangent screw. Now read both the verniers. There will be two verniers A and B on the horizontal circle and this both of this will be differing by 180 degrees. So Read with the vernier A and also vernier B and record it in the field book. Now, uh, you can take the mean of these two vernier readings at A and B to get the actual value of angle AOB. So, uh, this particular, this one set of reading you will be taking by keeping the instrument at face left. So you are taking face left observation. Now the same procedure you can repeat by changing the face of the instrument uh, and you may repeat the whole process so that you will be again getting an approximate value for angle AOB. The mean of these two values which is obtained from both face left and face right will give the required angle which is free from all the instrumental errors. So in that way you can find angle AOB 
using direct method. Okay, direct method or ordinary method. Now, coming to repetition method. So, this method is used for very accurate work. That means, same angle uh, is added several times mechanically and the correct value of angle is obtained by dividing the uh, accumulated reading, the final reading, let us say. Let us say the final reading is divided by the number of repetitions. So, if you are... Um, doing three observation in that way then you can divide the final va angle value from your uh, vernier scale and uh, divide it by number of observation usually uh, six number of observations are made in this way okay and how how it is six three will be from the face left and three will be from the face right so total of 6. So you can uh, divide the final observation by the count uh, of repetition and thus get the um, actual included angle AOB. Now let us see how we can measure the horizontal angle by uh, num repetition method. So already you have seen in the first method how to make a single reading single and uh, reading uh, by direct method okay a single value for angle aob how to get that you have already understood so um, after that so uh, let us understand uh, you are now citing uh, to b okay now your instrument setup is like you are you are uh, citing to B and you have read some reading. So that is that was our condition in the last method. Now, um, in if you are doing the repetition method, what you have to do after citing to B after taking first set of readings, you can loosen your lower clamp again. And then rotate your telescope so that you can again bisect A properly. The final adjustment can be done using the lower tangent screw. Now again loosen your upper, upper clamp screw. And again one more time you can sight B. And final adjustment can be done using upper tangent screw. So in this way you can repeat this procedure and see in this figure three observations are taken by reading clockwise okay angles in the clockwise direction or in the face left observations are made okay now the same procedure is repeated by face right observations also and then divide the uh, sum by number of repetition and the resulting one will be the correct value of angle AOB. So, the average value will give the exact angle, horizontal angle AOB with uh, less instrumental errors. Now, the last method that is reiteration method. This method is another precise method and uh, it is less tedious compared to the repetition method and this method is preferred if several angles are to be measured at a particular station in that condition you will be using this reiteration method so this method consists in measuring several angles successively in a continuous manner uh, and uh, in most cases we will be finally closing the horizon at the starting point. For example, if you are starting from station A, then you will be closing your reading set station A itself. Okay, so that the at, at the end you will be um, reading the initial reading itself. Okay. Now, for the... For this figure, let us explain the reiteration method. 
So uh, our aim is to measure all these included angles, angle AOB, BOD, COD, AOD, X, AOC, etc. So here set up the instrument over the station point O. So this is the center portion. So you can measure, uh, you can set up your instrument at O and properly center and level it. Then after that, you can direct your telescope to the point A uh, by referring to the ranging rod kept at A. Okay, properly bisect A and then uh, you have to check the vernier uh, is reading 0. Uh, before this uh, bisection, you have to check your vernier is reading 0 by adjusting your lower clamp screw. Now, uh, after properly bisecting A using the lower tangent screw, you can loosen your upper clamp screw and sight to B by rotating your telescope in the clockwise direction. Okay, now sight to B um, and again uh, you can note down the reading by sighting to B accurately using the upper tangent screw. Now after recording your observation, continue uh, loosening your upper clamp screw and then sight to D and similarly uh, you can continue booking by sighting to C and again to A and thus you can close this reading. Okay. So each bisection, uh, by doing each bisections, you can find out the included angles. Finally, while closing at point A, uh, you should get the initial reading itself. If uh, you are not getting that reading, uh, if there is some difference in the reading, so in this way, if you are closing the horizon, exact, you should exactly get 360 degree at the end but if you are not getting 360 degrees some 359 degree you are getting in that case you must uh, distribute this one degree error equally to all the angles okay if the difference is very high then this uh, set of readings are discarded and you have to do this procedure once again repeat the procedure so this particular procedure is uh, repeated for phase right also in phase right condition also and average of the uh, average of the angles from both phase left and phase right observation will give the correct uh, included angle um, included angles without the instrumental errors so that's about the reiteration method now coming to the measurement of vertical angles. While measuring the vertical angle, one point you have to keep in mind is that if your uh, telescope is exactly horizontal, then your verniers in the vertical circle should read zero. So that is the condition if your instrument is properly centered and leveled. Now coming to the vertical angle. The vertical angle is an angle between the inclined line of sight and the horizontal axis. So it may be either an angle of elevation like this or it can be uh, an angle of depression. Uh, it depends, um, depends on whether the point is above or below the line of sight. Okay. So in order to measure the vertical angle, what you should do? You have to first of all set up the theodolite at station point O and level it accurately with reference to the altitude bubble which is near to the vertical circle. So first of all you have to set up your instrument at the station point O as shown in this figure. Now uh, you have to after uh, setting your instrument properly leveling it, uh, you have to check whether the vernier in the vertical uh, circle is reading exactly zero. For that you have to adjust your vertical 
uh, circle clamp and tangent screw so that you can make it to exactly zero. Now bring the um, altitude level in central position using your clip screw uh, in the instrument and so that the line of sight is uh, made horizontal and uh, your vernier is reading zero. So all these are ensured before taking the uh, vertical angle. Now you have to measure the uh, angle of A from the horizontal axis. That means in this first figure you have to measure this angle alpha. Okay. If that is the case, what you have to do? You have to loosen the vertical clamp screw and you have to direct the uh, telescope to the object held at the station A. Some ranging rod will be fixed at A. You have to look into this A and loosen your uh, lower clamp and after bisecting properly at A you can uh, tighten your vertical clamp and proper bisection, accurate bisection can be done using the uh, tangent screw, vertical circle tangent screw. Then after exactly bisecting this you can take the reading. Read both the verniers on the vertical circle. You can read two verniers, uh, two verniers. That means uh, vernier C and vernier D will be there. You can take both the values and repeat the procedure uh, by changing the face. That means if earlier you have taken face left observation, you can change the face of the instrument and repeat the process so that you will get two set of uh, vernier readings. Um, and you can take the average of the two values of the angle obtained uh, and thus you can obtain the uh, vertical angle which is free from all the instrumental errors. See, sometimes uh, this uh, angle, this uh, points A and B will be on the same side of the horizontal line like the figure B and C. Okay, so in that case, if you have measured uh, the angles by citing to A and citing to B, you will be getting while citing to B, you will be getting this angle and by citing to A, you will be getting this angle. So in that case, to find out the included angle A O B, you have to subtract these two so that you will be getting the included angle. Similarly, if both angles are angles of depression, uh, by citing to A, you will be getting this angle and by citing to B, you will be getting this angle. So, you have to again take the difference to get the included angle AOB. So, that is how you have to take the vertical angles. See, this is an example of uh, booking this vertical angles uh, in a field book. You can see the C and D verniers, how the readings are booked. Uh, after, by looking to A, if you have taken both these C and D observation, you have to find out the mean of that observation so that you will be getting the correct value in the face left. Now again, uh, in the face right observation also, you will be getting uh, a reading from vernier C and vernier D. You can take the mean of that and average of these two values. These two will be your correct value corresponding to A. Okay. So that is how uh, you can do the booking in field. Thank you. Hope you have understood the session.